In this video, we're going to talk about the Voronoi Sketch Generator from Autodesk for Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I'm going to talk about something from the Autodesk App Store, and that's this Voronoi Sketch Generator. Now this is free for download, anybody can use it, and I thought it was worth a video to talk about what this is, how we can use it, and where we might apply it. So the first thing to do is you can go to the description in the video and you can go to the link to download it for yourself. You need to choose your operating system, and then you simply select download. You will need to be logged in with your Autodesk account, so make sure that you do log in, or as soon as you select download, it'll probably prompt you to log in then anyways. Once you download it, I find it's best practice to try to place all of the apps together. So I would go to Utilities and go to your Scripts and Add-ins. And if you've never done this before, this is going to be an add-in. And if you simply hit the plus icon or create a new one or go to Details, it'll tell you the location of where your apps are saved. Generally, it's somewhere inside of your user drive on your local machine, but make sure that you do place it in that same location. For this one on a PC, you'll simply need to run the download, you'll install it, it has its own installer, and then it'll automatically appear inside of your scripts and add-ins. Once you have it here, we simply need to select Run. You can check this box if you want it to start every time you open up Fusion 360. For me, I'm just going to run it this one time. You can see here that it says the command has been added to the Create Panel dropdown, the Model Workspace. Now, if you haven't been using Fusion for very long, we used to have a model workspace for solid bodies, and we had a patch workspace for surfaces, a sheet metal one for sheet metal, and so on. That has changed, so I imagine that this tool has probably been around for quite a while, but you'll find it on the Solid tab under the Create menu. And if you want it to be displayed on your toolbar, you can leave it there, but we can also use the three-dot icon on the right, and we can unpin it from the toolbar. Now that we know how to download it and install it, let's talk about how to use it. So as I've been playing around with this, there have been a few things that I've noticed. I haven't had good luck getting it to work on components, so I'm going to focus on creating bodies at the top level of our design. Now, if I get it to work on components later on and figure that out, I'll let everybody know. But for right now, it hasn't, it hasn't really worked for me, and it's not consistent, so I want to make sure that I focus on how the tool works and some of the design considerations that we should use. The first things first is I'm going to create a sketch, and while it's not strictly required, it's good to understand what we should do in terms of workflow. So I'm going to start on the top plane, and it is important to note that this is going to generate in the positive quadrant system. So if your modeling approach is something like mine, where you generally come in with a center point rectangle and build from the origin, that's not going to work unless you determine that you're going to create this in the upper quadrant and create a pattern of it. So I'm going to hit escape on the rectangle. I'm going to start another two point rectangle and simply go up and to the right. The size isn't going to matter, but let's go ahead and do 200 millimeters by 100 millimeters and hit enter. So now we're in the positive coordinate space. I'm going to finish my sketch and then I want to extrude this. I'm going to just create a solid body that I can remove the material from and say, okay. One of the things that we should be aware of is we can use the original sketch, but best practice dictates that we should probably create a new sketch. And the reason for that is when the Voronoi generator is running and we insert it into Fusion 360, whatever sketch profile we use, in this case, if we grab the border from our extrude, it's going to place all of those cell elements in that same sketch, which means it's going to affect our original extrude. So for this example, I want to create a new sketch on the top of my part. I'm going to right click, I'm going to say create sketch, and then I'm going to finish. I'm just going to simply use the profile of this extrude. From here, I'm going to go to create, and I'm going to use my sketch generator. Then I need to start by selecting my sketch profile. While this step isn't strictly required, we could use a construction plane, and then we could simply dictate the size, the width and height. It's going to be better for us to have a sketch profile and use the use profile size. From here, I'm going to go into the Voronoi editor, and you can see that we have a preview on screen of what this looks like. 
The blue border is our selected sketch. We can determine the cell style. In this case, we can use straight or curved. It's important to note that curved are going to be created based on splines, and those splines are going to be underdefined in the sketch. Now, generally, the straight ones seem to be coming in as fully defined. So keep that in mind if you're using this, that you will get an underdefined sketch created with splines. Next, the cell count. If we increase this, it's going to increase the number of cells. If we decrease it, it'll decrease it. Pretty straightforward. It is important to note that you should be careful with how quickly you move the slider. Don't just crank it all the way up to the top. If it fails to show you a preview here, that doesn't necessarily mean that the tool won't generate a sketch. You just won't know what you're getting. If that happens, I find it's best to close this. Go ahead and stop the app and then start it back up. Next, we have the scale, which is gonna determine how large these are. 100 is gonna bump them into each other. So this is essentially like a cell fracture if you've used that in Blender. So we're gonna reduce this so that we have a little bit of space between them. The relaxation will allow the cells to adjust their placement. So if you wanna get closer to a complex border, increasing the relaxation will allow them to begin to move around. You can see them changing on screen. And that'll get you closer to a more consistent pattern through here, as well as get closer to your border. The clip outside and clip intersecting, I find really come into play if you have a complex profile, something like a spline. And then if any of the cells tend to go over or touch the border, what's going to happen is this clip option will completely remove that cell. If you turn these off, it'll allow the cells to be built outside of that area, which means that you're going to have to do some manual work to determine what you want to extrude and what you don't. The add page border option, that is really going to come into effect if we download this as a scalable vector graphic. For us in Fusion 360, we already selected a sketch profile. So adding the border is just going to add another sketch profile in there. So I suggest that we just leave it off. And this last option, this padding, is going to increase the space between our selected border and the cells. So in this case, since we actually grabbed the entire profile of our extrude, adding a little bit of padding will ensure that we're inset a little bit, but we do have a preview on the screen. There is a slider all the way at the bottom for zoom, but that's just to show the, the graphic in the window. It has no effect on the cell size. So once we're done selecting all of our options, we go to Publish to Fusion 360. Now, when we do this, this is one of the things I've, I've noticed with this tool. Sometimes it ends up in the negative quadrant. Sometimes it'll end up in the positive quadrant. It has never been centered about the origin. It's always going to be down here or up here. With this, you'll note that it just simply did not place it inside of the border. I haven't figured out why this is happening or really a good way around it. But if we go into this sketch and edit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to box select everything. I'm going to use move, which is M on the keyboard, or you can go to modify and move copy. And what I want to do is I'm going to select point to point. So I know that it's using my border. I'm going to go from the origin up to here and move all of those back into my, my rectangle in this case. Now I will note that this does not always work. If you use the straight option for the cells, those come in fully defined, and I've noticed that they don't have any actual constraints applied to them. They're just fixed in place, and I haven't really figured out how to unlock them easily. So it works with the curved option. If it doesn't work for you, then you might need to play around with moving your solid body to the right location. But again, this is just one of those things that I've, I've found in just playing with the app. The next thing I want to talk about is a quick way that we can select all these cells, because this, as we increase the cell count, is going to be very time consuming. So the, the first thing that I like to do is select the outside area, the area that we want to keep. Then I'm going to go to Select, Selection Tools, and Invert my selection. Because that outside area was a profile in the sketch, the only other elements in that sketch are the cells. So Fusion 360 will grab all of those, and now we can go into our Extrude tool. I'm going to rotate this around so I have a good view, and then I'll just begin pulling these down, and then I'm going to change my distance to through all. So you can see that was pretty straightforward, pretty easy for us to come in and create that cut through our part. But what if we do if we have a more complex shape, something that's not just a flat panel? 
Well, in that case, we just simply need to plan everything out accordingly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from a front view this time. I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna come out to the left, and then I'm gonna use an arc, and I'm gonna start from here, and I'm gonna come down and to the right, and I'm gonna to go to a tangent position. I'm gonna hit escape, and then I wanna turn this into construction and finish my sketch. From here, I do still wanna be mindful of the origin because remember, we're either gonna be in the positive or negative space. So I'm gonna create a thin extrude and I'm gonna drag this thin extrude back in the positive direction. I'm gonna go 100 millimeters and I'm gonna set its thickness at 10 millimeters. So you can see here, we've got a thin extrude based off of that sketch. Now that we have that solid body, I wanna create a new sketch this time on my top plane I'm gonna draw a rectangle. I could project the actual solid body, but in this case, I want to extend it out past because what we're looking at doing is we're looking at wrapping a sketch around that solid body. If I want to, I could constrain it in the corners, but honestly, for this example, it's just gonna be more time consuming. So I'm gonna leave it under constraint. From here, I'm gonna go back to create sketch generator and select my profile. Once again, I wanna make sure that I use the profile size and get a preview on the screen. For this example, I'm gonna reduce the cell count to make it a little bit easier to work with. And I wanna go down to padding, I'm gonna make sure that it's zero, and then I wanna publish this to Fusion 360. From here, the way in which we can get this to wrap around, again, we're gonna to go to our selection options and we're gonna invert that selection so we have all of our cells. Then I'm gonna to go to create and emboss. I can select the face I want this applied to, and you can see here that it's able to wrap that around. All of these extrusions are normal to the curvature of the surface. And if we want them to cut through, we can deboss it. We can simply pick the distance to go through, in this case, minus 10 millimeters, and we can say, okay. So it's a quick way for us to use this tool to create some very intricate designs. It always is going to be important whenever you're learning a tool or whenever you're trying to figure something out that you understand not only how to use it, but what its limitations are. Because I find that the frustration that comes from trying to apply a tool in an application where it just doesn't work, you end up spending a lot of time and you end up getting pretty frustrated because the tool isn't working how you think it should. So with this tool, the couple words of caution again is remember that it's working in the coordinate system, not centered about the origin. So make sure that you are at least working or you move your bodies into those positive areas. If the sketch happens to come in the wrong place, consider moving the body just in order to get the extrude to work. When we're doing things like using the, the emboss tool, we have to be mindful that emboss works on cylindrical profiles, but there is going to be a limitation. You can't make something crazy out of a spline and a sweep and then expect this to work. So there are gonna be limitations there and you just need to be mindful of them. And the last thing, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a new sketch. I'm gonna use a spline and I'm just gonna create sort of a funky shape. And I'm not even going to create an extrude in this case, but we're just gonna take a quick look at how it works with this profile. We're gonna use the profile size, and then let's go ahead and expand this and let's reduce the zoom amount so we can see it. So here you can see that it is trying to fill in that shape. We can increase the cell count, which is gonna make them smaller, more likely for them to fit that profile. We can increase the relaxation, which is gonna let them move around a bit. And we can turn off the clip outside and clip intersecting. So you can see that it's automatically trying to work itself into a rectangular pattern. Even though we have a sketch profile here, it's, it's going to be using that, that uh, rectangular area to build the grid, and then it's gonna be clipping from there. So clipping intersection will get rid of anything that's touching our border, and clip outside will get rid of anything that is outside of our border. So this can be handy, especially if you draw a border that's slightly undersized, or you have an offset curve that you can use to then trim these additional cells, you can get a pretty unique design or pattern out of this. And then again, we just publish it to Fusion 360. It's gonna push it directly into whatever sketch we used for that sketch profile. And then you can use it to create solid bodies or extrudes or whatever. But here again, you can see the same problem happened. We now have this profile of all these different cells and it's just not in the right location. 
So I'm not exactly sure the reason that this happens, but just be aware of it and note that you might have to move things around in order to get them to work properly. Not a big deal. In a lot of cases, we can select those cells. And again, we can just use move. But for this example, I'm not going to go through that process because we we already know how to do it. We've already seen it done. So if you've played around with this tool or you have any ideas or you've had trouble with the tool, then please comment, let me know. And if there are any other apps in the App Store that you've come across and you liked and you maybe want some content on, please let me know that as well. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.